Hyperthermic conditioning can also inhibit muscle atrophy uh, through, through a similar mechanism. So in one study that was very similar to what I just talked about, they hyperthermically conditioned these mice, and then they immobilized them for a week, and they found that uh, the ones that were hyperthermically conditioned lost 32% less of their uh, muscle. So, and that's because hyperthermic conditioning increases the expression of HSP70. HSP70 can prevent oxidative stress on those proteins. It can also decrease inflammation because it, decrease, it uh, decreases the expression of um, NF-kappa B or inhibits the activity of NF-kappa B, which is known to play a role in accelerating muscle atrophy. And that's how you're able to maintain your muscle mass. So just an aside here um, I thought was kind of cool is that HSP32, a specific heat shock protein, um, also known as heme oxygenase 1, can, has been shown to protect against rhabdomyolysis. Uh, rhabdomyolysis, for any of you guys that don't know, can occur during very, very, very extreme muscle overuse. Um, and what happens is that your muscle tissue starts to break down and it releases myoglobin into the bloodstream, which is then toxic to the kidneys and then you can go into kidney failure. So HSP32 um, actually degrades myoglobin. So HSP32 is a heme, uh, it catalyzes a reaction that degrades, degrades heme, which is in myoglobin. So they've shown that HSP32 in mice can protect against rhabdomyolysis because it degrades that myoglobin uh, before it can be toxic to the kidneys. Uh, and this is very different from uh, the role of most HSPs in preventing protein degradation, but I thought it was a really interesting um, point. So how does hyperthermic conditioning um, affect growth hormone? Well, uh, hyperthermic, so sauna use um, can increase the expression of, uh, sorry, can uh, increase the release of growth hormone um, by quite a bit. Um, and that, so the way that growth hormone can help you maintain muscle mass is um, by, usually medi mediated by IGF-1. And so IGF-1 can affect protein synthesis by increasing mTOR, and it can also decrease protein degradation by activating um, FOXO genes. And so this is how increasing growth hormone can help uh, maintain muscle mass because it's hel it helps maintain that balance, that net protein synthesis. Um, and so actually if you take IGF-1 and express it in the muscle cells of mice, um, they, it causes hypertrophy. So mice that have IGF-1 here, you can see their forelimb and high limb, uh, they have much higher levels of uh, muscle mass compared to just a normal wild type mouse. Um, that's just to highlight the role of IGF-1 in, in, in hypertrophy basically in the muscle. So how does the sauna affect growth hormone? Well, it all depends on the temperature of the sauna, the amount of time you're in the sauna, and the frequency that you do it. So for example, two back-to-back 20-minute -back sauna sessions at 176 degrees Fahrenheit uh, has been shown to increase the expression of growth hormone by twofold over baseline. Two one-hour sauna sessions this is totally extreme, separated by a 30-minute cooling period um, for three days in a row, can, express, uh, can increase the expression of growth hormone over baseline by 16-fold. Um, and that's something, it's very extreme, just, it's just to highlight the, 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 what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that you can hyperthermically condition your body to uh, cause these physiological adaptations um, that help you, you know, upon later heat stress, you're, 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 you're adapting and there's certain cellular responses that are occurring. Um, and so... This, there's a few studies if you want to take a look at the article on the, the four-hour workweek blog that I uh, just did a, a guest blog post on.